Let's focus on the breath. The mind will tell you there are other things you can think about, but there are lots of other things you can think about. But the mind needs to be trained. One, because it does provide a pleasant place for the mind to stay in the present moment, and also because it prepares you for, for things that are coming down the line. I was talking today to someone who said she doesn't like to motivate herself with thoughts of fear, but the Buddha said there's a healthy fear and there's unhealthy fear. The healthy fear is your fear that you're going to do something unskillful when aging, illness, and death come, or when separation comes, when poverty comes, because the life has, life has its ups and downs. And you want to be able to trust yourself so that even when things get really, really difficult, the mind will make the right choice. That way it needs to, for that, it needs to be strengthened, which is one of the reasons why we give it a place to stay like this, because this becomes its stronghold. You can stay with the breath. There's a sense of well-being. And when you're coming from that sense of well-being, you're a lot more likely to see things clearly and then be able to act on what you see. It's when the mind is weak that it can't trust itself. Either doesn't see these things clearly, or it sees things clearly as to what should and shouldn't be done, but it doesn't have the strength to do the right thing. So it's good to prepare yourself. Now that you're healthy enough to meditate and develop good qualities in mind, this is a good time to do it and not get complacent. The Buddha gives an analogy of the horses. There's the horse that all you have to do is say, whip, and it does what you want it to do. There's another horse that you have to show at the whip. The third one, you have to touch its skin. The fourth one, you have, the whip has to go a little bit into the, into the flesh before it'll do what you want it to do. And the fifth one is when you have to, the whip has to go to the bone. And the Buddha said, people are like that. Some people see their dangers in life and they prepare, even when they just hear about them. Others have to see them, and others they have to be touched. And the extent to which you have to be touched before you realize you've got to get your act together. That's up to you to decide. Realizing, of course, that when things get really bad, it's going to be harder and harder to get your act together. When it goes into the flesh, it goes into the bone. Okay, that's you've weakened your flesh and you've weakened that part of the body. So, for your own well-being, you have to see. Okay, there are dangers in life, and the intelligent thing is not fearful, but it's just intelligent. Is you've got to prepare the mind, so the mind doesn't add to any unnecessary suffering on top of what you've already got. In fact, if, as you learn when you practice, it's the unnecessary suffering that weighs the mind down the most. The unnecessary, the necessary stuff, is simply the fact of having a body and experiencing the ups and downs of the body and the ups and downs of human life. Those things don't have to make inroads on the mind. It's the suffering that the mind creates itself. That's the suffering that weighs it down. So here's your chance to learn how to undo that suffering, how to develop this, the strengths you need in order to prevent yourself from falling into it. So take advantage of the opportunity while you've got it.